We are live. <laughs> okay. Just waiting for one minute before I go straight into it. Tush Black Coffee. Hi. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Busam Collections. Thank you for joining. Thank you. <clears throat> I'll just wait one more minute and I'm going to go into the questions for today. Living, playing, learning. Thank you. You're welcome to another episode of Mommy Mo Speaks. <laughs> Sounds like a TV show. The Prospero. Thank you for joining. Once he hits, um, well, 8.32 on my end, um, I'm going to start. What time is it where you are? Are you in Nigeria or are you in Kenya or are you where are you? Before it hits eight thirty two. This is eight thirty two PM my time. I'm ahead of Nigeria by two hours. Yeah, eight thirty two. So I'll just go straight into the questions we have for this episode of Mommy Mo Speaks. If this is your first time on Mommy Mo Speaks, um, what basically happens is people have sent in questions that they need answers to and then I answer live, okay? Um, we've done a couple already. Um, so the replays are on for all the questions because moms always have questions, <laughs> always have questions. I always have questions in my DM. Um, sometimes I'm able to attend to them. Sometimes I'm, un I'm unable to attend to them. So I created this um, forum so that or rather this, this series so that I can always attend to those questions and the answers to those questions can then help other people. Because if I answer one person's question privately, another person may have the same question. And, and if I'd answered publicly, then I'd have helped more than one person. So that's why we have Mommy Mo Speaks, all right? So question one, Ma, Ma, Marie, Marie, <laughs> thank you for joining. Hi, Tyler, thank you for joining. Okay, so first first question, how do I grow my daughter's hair? Okay, so now, <laughs> to answer this, um, is it, oh, well, let's say the tricky question, it's, okay, it's a valid question in that a lot of us, a lot, a lot of moms do not realize that um, hair growth is not something that is completely within their locus of control, okay, so... I, for instance, I have two daughters. I do not have 100% control over their hair growth, okay? Because first things first, like I've said over and over again, hair growth starts inside the scalp. I have no access inside my daughter's scalp. I have no access under the skin of her scalp. You understand? As in, for, for the most part, right? What I do have access to is the scalp, and I have access to her hair strands. I also have access to her feeding. I also have access or I have some control over her lifestyle. Okay? So I would answer this question from the point of view of what are the things that we can do as moms that can assist hair growth, okay, in our children. The first thing is that your child needs to be healthy. All right? Hair is produced by the body for the most part as a covering as um um okay it covers like it covers like you have eyebrows you have hair on your scalp so it covers your scalp uh, so it's there for like for, so, for some sort of protection all right but bear in mind that growing hair whether it's on your scalp or your, your child's scalp or anywhere else is not a an essential function of your body because you can not have hair and still be alive all right whereas if your heart is not working life is tricky if your lungs don't function it's tricky if you can't see 
you can manage, but life is not the same, all right? But when it comes to hair, your body, the body does not regard it as an essential um, function or as an essential thing to, to, to take care of. So if your child is healthy, your child's hair will grow, all right? Um, if your child becomes unhealthy, there are different infections, different diseases. The body now moves into... I need to help this child, this human being survive. And everything you are putting into the body in terms of health, health-wise, as food, as water and all of that, all the nutrients, the body will utilize it to keep the body alive. It will think about hair later. All right? So it's very important that your child is healthy. Because if your child is healthy, then all the essential and vital functions of the body are covered. And then the body will now say, oh, let us grow hair. Okay, let's grow hair. <clears throat> so it's important for a child to be healthy because nutrition impacts on hair growth. If your child doesn't have adequate nutrition, the body will prioritize the essential function of the body over growing hair. That's one thing. Um, then... Moms also need to realize that, like I said, you don't have 100% control over hair growth in your children. But if you notice that your child has eyebrows, your child has eyelashes, there's hair on your child's skin, <laughs> on body, your child's hair is growing. Okay? Your child's hair is growing. So once you know that your hair is growing, so there's no issue with growth, your child is healthy then the next thing for you to do is to maintain what is coming out of the scalp. That is how you can help your child's hair grow in quotes. You are not actually the one doing anything that is making hair cells multiply and come out of the follicle. No, that's not your job. You have no control over that. That is the, 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 the bodily function of your child. Okay. So I've said health. I've said nutrition. Now you have access, you have control over your child's scalp and over your child's hair strands. Healthy hair grows from a healthy scalp. A healthy scalp is most often a clean scalp. So let's start there. You need to keep your child's scalp clean. So you need to have a routine, um, depending on the age of your child. Uh, one week, two weeks for wash day. Babies probably a little more often during the week, you understand? So it will vary per child, per age stage, and then per your lifestyle. Some mothers cannot... They are not able to wash their children every two weeks. They're able to do it every three weeks. And then if you stick to that, that's fine. Okay? So you must have a regimen. You must keep the scalp clean as much as you can. Then you must keep the hair strands in good condition. Good condition means they should be clean as much as possible. So obviously, once you wash the scalp, <clears throat> you're obvious, obviously washing the hair strands. So hair strands should be clean as much as possible. Um, moisturized which means you're applying a leave-in moisturizer, which means you have a good moisturizing routine, either daily or every other day, or as your routine requires. So you're moisturizing, so the hair is not dry, the hair is not breaking, and you're sealing with a sealant, whether it's butter or it's oil, all right? You are also putting the hair in a protective style that helps to maintain moisture and helps to keep breakage away. So the thing is, you do these things, you keep breakage away, you keep your child's hair moisturized, you are able to retain length. A lot of mothers interpret length as growth. It's different, okay? So you are saying, well, my, my, my child's hair is not growing, it's not growing, it's not growing. What they're actually telling you is that it's not getting longer, <laughs> okay? So these things I've said, if you do them, then more likely you are able to retain length and you're able to appreciate the growth that has been coming out of your child's scalp. Okay, so remember what I've said. Hair growth is not 100% within your locus of control because you, cannot, you do not have access under the scalp. Okay, for the most part, you don't have access under the scalp. What you have access to is your child's nutrition. Keep your child healthy. Um, you have access to cleaning your child's hair, maintaining the hair strands. You have access to that. And all those things help in promoting um, healthy hair, which will in turn um, get longer and longer and longer if you do everything that is required for that. All right. Uh, some people joined us. Jokwe Ladipo, thank you for joining. Bifungs, thank you for joining. Fausa, thank you for joining. And Benita, thank you for joining. Second question. Does trimming actually help my daughter's hair? 
this is a very 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 big yes trimming helps your daughter's hair also helps your hair why as everything that um is on this earth right hair is subject to wear and tear the clothes we wear are subject to wear and tear which is why we replace clothes okay and when this top i wear it i wear it i wear it i wear it i wait to fade after a while from the washing the ironing the wearing it will fade after a while and if i wear it for longer than its shelf life or its intended usage it will begin to tear it will begin to tear same thing happens with even with with virtually everything your laptop you use it use it use it. one day it will die one day it will crash or it will start giving you signs of giving up the ghost everything is subject to wear and tear hair is not a clue sorry this is not this is not hair because <laughs> i was touching it like this is hair so anyway hair is also subject to wear and tear right naturally that's a natural occurrence that will happen in regular hair strands after a couple of weeks of, or months, the ends of hair, of your child's hair, they will wear out. And when they wear out, they begin to split on their own accord. So this is assuming you've done everything right. This is assuming you're moisturizing, you're deep conditioning, you're sealing, you're protective styling. Naturally, because of age and the occurrence of time, the ends of hair will on their own begin to split because they do not have the same structural integrity as the hair that is on this part, okay? This one, is, this one has been used and used and styled and combed and brushed for the last five years. This one that is here is not five years old, okay? I hope you understand what I'm, what I'm trying to say. So the wear and tear has occurred here, naturally, assuming all things being equal, you're doing everything right. So hair on its own begin to split. Splitting hairs means, um, so this is a hair strand. Once it begins to split, it will do this. And if you leave split hairs unchecked, it will continue to split all the way along the, sh the hair shaft, okay? So trimming will get rid of split ends caused by wear and tear. Trimming will also get rid of split ends caused by improper hair care practices, okay? Like heat styling, using a blow dryer often without using a heat protectant, um, using a flat iron often without using a heat protectant or even using chemicals on your child's hair. They will all cause splits. They will cause, they will cause splits. They will cause damage. Um, so trimming will get rid of damage. All right. And once you're able to get rid of damage, it means that once you've gotten rid of the bad eggs of the hair, what you're left is what is good, healthy, and has structural integrity. And that one can hold its own. So as more hair is growing and coming out of the scalp, the ends increase in length. And they're able to stay on to the, as in the, the strands. I don't know if you understand. The strands are able to stay on because their structural integrity is okay. All right? So trimming does actually help hair. It gets rid of damage that could occur either naturally or man-made damage, which is um, improper hair care practices, using chemicals, using heat, um, very vigorous hair brushing, very vigorous hair combing, um, constant use of extensions, all those things, you know, they take their toll on the hair. So if you're able to keep as much damage away from the ends of the hair, you are able to retain more length length <laughs> okay so trimming does actually help your child's hair and um, if you're not able to recognize when to trim you can go to a good natural hair salon a good one will be able to recognize that oh this hair is trimming and if um you don't want to do that then you could put your child's hair um hair hair trims on like a cycle you could do a trim every three months or every four months but with that you have to be mindful because if there's good hair you're cutting off good hair okay so you could space it out maybe every four months all right then um final question how long should i keep my daughter's protective style okay so this is like a two-pronged question because for some moms like myself protective styles are things like Twist, two strands, two strand twist with my own children's hair, no extensions added. Um, simple plates with their hair, no extensions added. Um, weaving with their hair, no extensions added. Someone else can read a protective style to mean they put their child's hair in extensions. Okay? So like I said, it's a two-pronged question. 
for protective styling that doesn't have extensions in um i would say you can keep it in for two weeks i do that i keep my child's hair style in for two weeks because we have wash days every two weeks and that works perfectly for us okay for some people their wash routine is every week so automatically they would keep in their protective style for only a week younger children probably have that children that you wash their hair weekly their protective style should only last for a week um so i'd say two weeks all right if you are putting your child's hair in extensions as a protective style i would say number one that child should be for me in terms of age Personally, I'd say maybe from about eight, nine, ten upwards before you start dabbling into extensions because you want the hair to have been like really okay before you start doing other stuff to it. I've never used extensions for my children's hair, but I know a lot of women do that. So um first of all consider that there may be a right time to start using extensions. And then if you do use extensions, um I'd say maximum keep it in for four weeks. Maximum. I know it a lot of people extend it a lot more than that because of their lifestyle, their situation, um, or they live in certain countries where it's not easy to do regular hair wash days and style and all of that. Okay, so for those who can do four weeks, in between those four weeks, I would suggest to you that you actually wash your child's hair in the protective style. Very important. Uh, wash and condition. If you want to keep it in longer than four weeks you must wash every two weeks some people i know some people keep their child's extensions in six weeks eight weeks you must wash you must wash you must condition and you must moisturize the protective style that has extensions on so that by the time you're taking it down you're not going to lose a lot of hair okay i hope that answers that question Falsad says, please, ma'am, can edge control gel be used on an eight-month-old baby? No, please. No. You don't need to use edge control for your eight-month-old baby. I'm assuming that this eight-month-old has a lot of hair for you to want to use edge control. Because there are eight-month-old baby that mothers have come to me that don't have hair on their head and they're looking for how to get hair on the head in the first place so once you're asking me if you want to use edge control it means the hair is plenty and you're looking for what to do to it how to style it and all of that please just leave that hair alone keep the hair in a fro if you can you are still able to like run a white tooth comb through it when you're um dressing her up in the morning or if it's become difficult to run a white tooth comb through it in the morning when you're dressing for her then you need to put her hair in a style like in simple twists Okay, simple twist. All right, so please don't use edge control gel on an eight month old. In fact, try not to use edge control gels for kids as much as you can help it. Okay, um, I for a lot of the time, and, and, I, and I tell moms this when I have the opportunity is that we moms we try to project our own um, concepts or perspectives of styling on our kids. Okay, of hairstyling on our kids, and it's not the same. An adult and a child are two very different human beings, uh, two different, two completely different phases of life, and all that is going on in the hair and the body is completely different. So, um, with babies, especially under one year, you do next to nothing, almost next to nothing. You're you're most welcome. Just to try to do almost next to nothing. Keep it clean. That means you need to shampoo. You need to condition, which is like a rinse out or a deep conditioner, depend, depending on volume of hair. Um, a leave-in, because you must keep the hair moisturized. And a butter and oil, because you must keep the hair sealed. And then protect the hair as much as you can. And just keep it simple. If possible, if you can carry your child's hair in a fro for up to 9 months, 10 months, 12 months, please go ahead and do that. My second, I didn't start styling her hair until she was 9 months old. Because by then, the fro was already becoming so thick and so difficult for me to be able to manage then i knew i had to start because my first one i made the mistake right from <laughs> only three months or four months as soon as hair came out of the of the scalp i started <laughs> we have to play it which is actually not the way to go with the benefit of hindsight so almost next to nothing very simple no need for any extra stuff apart from what will keep it clean or keep it moisturized and we'll keep it sealed all right so thank you everybody we've come to the end of today's episode of mommy mo speaks remember um you don't have to wait for an episode of mommy mo speaks to air before you can send in a question you can actually send in your questions 
send it as a DM, put it in the comments. I populate the questions. I gather them together so that um, I can answer. All right. And then the replays are always available. They're re they available on here. They're available on YouTube so that you can always um, have access to the answers. Okay. Thank you for everybody who joined. <laughs> I'm really, I really, really appreciate you. I appreciate your support for the brand, for me, for the girls. And I do hope that everything we do is of value to you. Have a wonderful night and God bless you. Bye-bye.